For this tutorial, I'm using a white pastel pencil and I will be sketching first where my lights are going to be located on my page. So as the reference, I'm not going to stick to my reference completely. I just want to look at it and see how the light actually um, shines from within these lights and place the composition which is pleasing onto my page. So I have a small format here, it's smaller than A5, and let's begin. So with the white pastel pencil, or you can use a charcoal pencil, will do perfectly fine. I will start and add my composition. So I'm just looking at where I want my lights located. I really like the idea of two lights close by, one close to the other. So let's add another one here. So here, basically what I'm doing is I'm just looking at my lights and placing them in a composition on my page, which is going to make it look more interesting. So you can cut the part of a light here. Maybe another light over here. And what I want to do is I also want to add some lights in the distance. We will blur those out. So I'm just thinking where I would like those placed. Like so. So these are enough for the composition and now we can start adding the colors. So for the colors, to make those lights really bright, we need to use dark colors. So it's very important that for this um, tutorial you have the reds, yellows, greens and blues, very dark pastels. So I will start with my mid-tone blue and I will start adding the color to the light that I want to be in focus. So I'm just adding the outer edge. And as I move towards the center, I'm adding brighter colors until I get to that very bright inside my um, lamp light. And on the outer edge, I'm going to add this very dark blue to make it um, more bright. So I'm going to gently start blending these out so also I wanted to say that I chose this paper on purpose as pastel mat, as any other abrasive surface, is going to allow you to create the prettiest um, colors so it's going to be as bright as you want it to be and for the lights that's very important. So now that we are done with the outside of our light, I'm going to add a bit of this blue on the outer edge and this is going to create that glow. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub it into the paper. So you can see already our light is starting to glow. So we can add a bit of this brighter color here. And again, I'm looking at that highlight. So it's not... Um, precisely a round shape in there. It has these different interesting um, movements happening in there. Okay, so that's the first light. Next, we're gonna do the same thing with our next color. And I'm gonna clean my hands. Always a good idea to clean your hands when working in pastel. Otherwise, you might contaminate the colors and it's going to create mud. But let's pass on to the next light. So I'm going to use my mid-tone value red again, not the darkest first. And I'm going to add this beautiful edge to my light. So it has a rim that is darker. And towards the center, it becomes more saturated in color. And then it becomes very bright. There we go. So now again, I can start blending it out. You can even drag this color out without applying it afterwards, so we can add just a bit of color outside of our light and drag this color out to create that glow. 
Okay, and now with the darker color, I'm looking at how this edge of my this little bulb goes so it has the same round shape as the blue one and here I'm just indicating that edge adding a bit of this more intense pink just to create the impression of the light glowing so again the same principle we have the darkest on the outside then we have the midtone value that creates a beautiful glow that goes on the outside as well and we blend that into the color of the paper here and then the more towards the center it gets the brighter more saturated the color becomes and then it's still the same color family so in this case it's red but it's very light in the center where the light is actually glowing from so let's do this other light here and i was actually thinking we can do a uh, green next to it not the red like i have in the reference but a green color so i'm using this very bright green so, and immediately i'm going to pull it out to create that glow like so then I'm gonna add the dark green rim to my light and blend it towards the inside like so and towards the center we have more saturated brighter colors happening and again blending the thing out and in the center here we will have that bright color like so. And here the two colors will meet. But don't blend them together too much, otherwise it might create mud. Okay, next I would like to add a yellow one here. And we go the same way. We create first the light with a saturated mid-tone value and blend it out to create that glowing effect. And again, here we need to think about perspective. So the la lights, the light bulbs that are closer to us will be bigger in size and the ones that are further away from us will be smaller in size. So you need to keep that in mind. And here we are starting to add that lighter color go all the way through these yellows and into the brights. I'm making sure that my finger is clean and that I cover with this yellow especially that I cover all the paper. If the paper shines through here it's going to look a dirty yellow and I need also something slightly darker to create that edge of the light and we can go here to this orangier warmer yellow and again blending it in like so next I would add another blue over here making sure that I have blue on my fingers not yellow and blending it out to create the beautiful glow like so and again we're adding darks and to make our light glow we're adding the lights there we go and now for those lights in the background what we can do is again I'm cleaning my hands constantly that's a very important thing when you're working different colors what I want to do is I want to create a blurred kind of um, view of the lights make them really far back and here I will not be using the lightest value as I used in my lights on the first plane here 
because I want these to recede into the distance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend them out. So adding a bit more of this lighter color, like so. Next to it, let's add the yellow. So remember, our blurs are going to happen circularly, so we will have circles blurring out into the background. This lighter yellow. If you have dragged your light too much, if it seems too bright or if it, the patch seems too large, you can always clean it up with a neat eraser. Okay, then we can add a green one in the background here, make it smaller. Like so, another blue one in the distance here. Again, make it smaller. So here I'm just adding that bokeh effect to my lights. Like so. And now to really make our lights glow, I will add this dark blue over here to create the darkness. We forgot one lamp here. So let's make it green. This is going to be the green one shining from above here. So why did I say that it's important that you have the darks of each color? Because if you blend with the blacks, you will never achieve the saturated color even in the dark areas on our lights. So that's important. So now that I have my darks in place, what I can do, I can gently blend these around my lights, not blending it together with the color of my lights, just around my lights. So this is going to give it another kick and it's going to make our lights seem even brighter. You can also use not a dark blue here, you can use uh, black will work perfectly fine. Very thin layer, remember, just don't make it too thick, otherwise we won't be able to layer after we finished this. And here, you see, I'm leaving the space. I'm not blending it into the color of the light that is glowing. I need to drag that color out a bit more. And don't worry if your lights become too blurred at the moment, we will still adjust their sharpness. So it's perfectly okay. So we're blending this. So you can see how that immediately makes our lights pop. If, I if I'm lacking pastel somewhere, I can always go back and add it. And this way we also correct that shape of our lights. And here we don't need to make it as dark and just kind of show that there is depth in there, but it doesn't have to be as dark as the foreground color. Another thing, it also doesn't have to be very even because it's not that we have a flat background behind our lights, so there might be a room happening, it might be a Christmas tree in the dark, glowing. So here, again, I'm adding this dark. Okay, and you can see immediately how our lights become more alive. Okay, next what we are lacking is 
the wires that connect our lights to the power source. And for that, I will need another pastel pencil and I will be using a black one. So again, this is a pastel pencil. You can use a charcoal pencil, it will work perfectly fine. And now we can start adding sharpness to our lights. So in the blue ones, I can use this black pastel pencil. Also on the edge here, and we can indicate that there's this wire happening bit inside. Okay, and here I see that this part is quite large, and from it there goes the wire. So the wire we can put it any way as we please that fits our composition. Let's do another wire here. And it's very important to actually pay attention to how these wires are located because we will be adding the glow from the lamp lights onto our wires. So I'm just adding those tips here. Maybe there's another wire going here like so. Where it's glowing the most here, for example, I will add a bit of that red just to show the glow from the light happening. And we can also add just a bit of that black onto the edge here just to create a sharper shape of our light. Just to indicate that sharper. Okay. So here from the green, there's going to go another wire. And here, maybe there's another wire happening here. They have these many, many wires usually. And here, this one will have the tip over here. We don't need to draw these in perfectly. Oh, don't drag the wrong color in. What we need to do, I'm just noticing where I want my wires to actually be. What we need to do is we need to um, create a pleasing composition and then we need this map of our wires to actually create the light shining from the lights onto our wires as well. So for that you can use a pastel chalk or you can use a pastel pencil. So for example for the reds I can use either an orange, either a red, and here where I mapped out my yellow, uh, my wire, sorry, the closer it is to the light, the brighter this reflected light is going to happen. Here we can correct the shape a bit with a pastel pencil. Okay, next, the blues. So I'm gonna take a blue pastel pencil why am I using pastel pencils? So first, the pastel pencil is harder and it gives you the ability to add sharper and more precise marks. And the second is that this paper allows you to actually build up pastel layers and pencils will layer nicely over the layers that we already applied. And the third is that I don't want this color to be as intense as the lights themselves, so pastel pencils in this give me a beautiful glaze and create this Kind of impression of the light shining onto our wires here. So if I were to add a pastel on top of my wires here it would give me too bright of a light and I would need to blend it away but with a pencil we can add this beautiful glaze and it's going to look just right. So the closer to the light the brighter it should be. So remember, our lights, they're shining outwards. Okay, and also here we can show that there's this wire happening, a bit of that blue in there. And now what we're lacking is the green. So I'm gonna take a green. And with the green, I'm going to add the same way these reflected lights 
and correct the shape if I need to. And there we go, our lights are all done. What we can do now is add those definite highlights in the middle of the light, the light itself and make them just a bit brighter now without blending. Like so, the green here and the bright blues over here. And there we go, our lights are all ready.